Hey there, good morning, it's me. Um, you join me under uh, rather exceptional circumstances today. Uh, normally I'd be taking you out on some spontaneous wonder or amazing animal experience that I've just come across, but today is a little bit closer to home. Today's adventure is something I just, just didn't expect at all, and it's all about baby birds. You know, this time of year, you often find baby birds that have fallen out of the nest, or you find a nest that's on the ground containing baby birds. And our natural instinct as humans, as mammals, is to care, is to preserve, is to love. And so we naturally want to pick up baby birds, but unfortunately, that is the worst thing we can do. The reason being is birds are so very different to us humans, and us getting involved with baby birds is very traumatic for them. Plus, of course, their parents are often hanging around as well, looking down and keeping an eye out for the baby birds, even when they've fallen out the nest. So ultimately, what we should really do is leave them there. That's the best thing for them, saving the knowledge that their parents are gonna swoop down, look after them and feed them. So it's best to leave things well alone. But this morning I was contacted by a friend of mine under some extreme circumstances. His neighbours had found some baby house martins. They were on their drive. And what had happened was a storm had destroyed their nest, had knocked their beautiful nest out from under the eaves of their roof, and it was now smashed up on the driveway. Well, they had really good presence of mind to do what I just described, and they left those babies where they were. Well, what they actually did was they got those babies, put them back into the pieces of nest, and they put them as close to where the nest had been under the eaves of their house, and they left them to it but unfortunately the parents were long gone. And so my mate gave me a call to say, hey, what do we do under these circumstances? These are exceptional circumstances. And I said, well, I know a lot about raising birds. I've done it many, many times over many, many years. And I know that these are extreme situations in which we've got to intervene. And so he gave them to us. So what I've done is I've got these three tiny baby house martins. We've got them in a container and we've put them in the incubator in our house, which is normally reserved for hatching reptile eggs. But under these circumstances, this is the perfect conditions that these babies need. It's quiet, it's dark, and it will allow them to get over the trauma of them falling out of their nest and being separated from their parents. And that's exactly what we've done. We're just gonna leave them to it in this little tiny mock nest that we've made out of an ice cream tub. We're gonna leave them to chill. This is the most traumatic, the most dangerous time for them now. And so I cannot intervene. I've told my kids not to intervene. I've just got to leave them to it. If they're going to survive, they're going to survive on their own by coming to terms with this change in circumstance. Then after a few hours, once we've let them chill out a little bit, I'll go into the garage, be unbelievably quiet, and we'll see how they are. Because everything about this new world that we've presented them with is alien to them, and they're going to be terrified. So we have to be unbelievably quiet. Hopefully... I'm hoping like crazy now, and I can't make them do this. I can't help them anymore. All I'm hoping is that they're gonna get better of their own accord. And then once we've let them chill, we can go in and we can really quietly try and feed them. You're gonna come with me when we go in there to feed them. I've given no guarantees. House martins are really hard to raise because they're very highly strung birds. But the ultimate aim would be that one day, once they're raised and successful, is that we can release them. And we can film them for you guys being released and how satisfying and wonderful it would be to release them. It's a long, long way away yet. For all I know, they could well have died in the nest already, but we shall see. And all I can do is give them time. But fingers crossed, you guys can come with us on this journey and hopefully there'll be a good, positive result. So join me in a little while when I take you into the garage and we'll see. Fingers crossed, eyes crossed, we shall see. It's quite a few hours now after we got the baby house martins and here is our incubator. I'm sorry it's so dark, but at the end of the day I have to think what's best for the animals. And so we have to keep them dark to avoid any more trauma. us now after a couple of hours we've let them calm down everything's hopefully really chilled these are going to be the best circumstances now but hopefully they'll stop feeling that they're a lot better now and that they're feeling a lot more comfortable and that they'll start feeding so everything that you're about to see now is totally live totally improvised we're going to just take it as it comes and fingers crossed they'll be all right so let's do it first things first i'll turn the light on Supply of really nutritionally charged crickets, which we raise. 
lose ourselves, feed ourselves. So I've got these crickets, I've mashed them up in the same way that an adult martin would do. What they do is adult martin is they grab the crinty insects from the air because they feed on mosquitoes and other small flying insects, mash them up in their mouths, swallow them, swirl them around in their throat in a section called the crop. And then when they go back to their nest, they regurgitate a big blob of mashed up insects. That's exactly what I've done here. I'm now going to simulate a mummy, a martin's big gear, grab one of these crickets and hopefully, fingers crossed, arms crossed, legs crossed, eyes crossed, hopefully those babies will feed. Let's do it. My heart is in my mouth. Right, let's follow this, okay? Let's see if they feed. So really carefully, really gently. You can see how nervous they are. He's feeding. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Come around this way, don't you? So you can see a bit better. You see when they gape like that, that's them telling me, their mum, that they want food. Here, little one. There we go, they're perfect gaping. Perfect. Oh. Fantastic. He's feeding, right? He's having a bit of trash. You swallow, swallow, swallow. There we go, that's it. Yes, fantastic. I mustn't get too excited because I don't want to scare them. Here we are, little ones. Give you another one. Let's see if anyone else wants to feed. Here are little ones. Here you are, little ones. Here you are, little ones. Come on. Come on, little ones. Here you are. Here you are. Here you are. Come on. Come on. You want that one? You want that one? Look at that. Look at that gaping. Oh, he's gaping as well. Here you are, little one. Here we are. Oh, wow. Yes, yes, yes. Brilliant. This is a fantastic first stage. Here you are, lovely boy. You want that? This is so good. Oh, I'm so pleased. Really gotta keep my voice down here. You want some more? You want some more? Here we are, you want some more? Here. You want some more? There we are. That's the other one. Yes, yeah, so I'll give the other there. There we are, little one. You want some more or are you full up? I think he's full up. Here, little one. Rums. They are wolfing it down. That's fantastic. Oh yeah. There you are, little one. Oops. <laughs> this is exact. There you are, little ones. There you want some too. This one here. Seems a little bit more. You want that one? Okay, there we are. Crumbs. Yeah, this little chap here yeah. seems, even though he's the biggest, he seems a lot more nervous. I'm just hoping that he's actually got more food inside of him than these two little chaps here who are clearly hungry. But let's see. Here, yeah, little one, do you want some more? You want some more? Here, you want some more? Oh. There we are. Oops. There's so much fluff in here. Here, yeah, love. Yeah, love you. There we are. Fantastic. Oh, that's so good. I'm so pleased. I really didn't expect that. I thought they were going to be really stressed, really traumatised still. It's only been a few hours, but already they seem to have chilled out. Two of them, as you saw, fed really, really well. The third one, the largest one, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it's not ill and it's not traumatised. I'm hoping just because it's bigger, hopefully it's fed more recently. But again, time will tell. But that is a fantastic first feeding. Yes. They're clearly fed enough now. We'll give them a break. And again, their babies, just got to leave them to sleep. So I'll see you later, OK? Yes. I've decided just to give it one more go with that third one, just in case. Let's see. Come on, little chap. Here you are, little chap. Come on, little chap. Just come on, come on, guy. <laughs> yes, he fed. Sorry, I mustn't be too excited, but that's such great news. That's so good. That's so good. Right, I just pop the lid down. Right. Bearing in mind that he was quite quiet compared to earlier on. Let's assume he's still a bit stressed. He might already have a crop, the bit of his throat that actually stores the food. Maybe his crop is already filled. 
so let's not overstress him. We'll come back in a little while and try and give him a bit more of a feed. But just him feeding once, knowing that his brother or sister has also fed as well, is brilliant. So all three of them have fed.